is ABC7 Extra. Good evening, I'm Saul Sainz, and this is ABC7 Extra Sunday Edition. I want to take the opportunity to thank you for spending your Sunday evening with us. El Paso is one of the largest U.S. metropolitan cities without a law school, but that could soon change. Right now, state lawmakers are working to try to bring a law school to El Paso. According to our news partners at El Paso, Inc., Texas House Representatives passed a bill to establish the first law school on the border. While it waits action at the state Senate, Senator uh, Cesar Blanco introduced concurrent Senate version of the bill. He also vows to work to have a bill on the governor's desk to make a law school for El Paso reality. El Paso, uh, report, El Paso Inc. reports UTEP President Heather Wilson supports the idea of a law school and even wants the law school to be located on the UTEP campus. Now, joining us to talk about this is State Senator Cesar Blanco. Senator Blanco sits on the Higher Education Committee. Also joining us is Janet Montero. Ms. Monteros is the president of the El Paso Bar Association. I'm going to start with you, Senator Blanco. Now, how likely is it that El Paso will get a law school at this point? Well, it's great to be with you, Saul. And, uh, well, we're, we're closer than we've ever been before. This isn't the first time that the legislature has considered a proposal to start a law school in El Paso. Uh, in my first session in the House, I authored a bill to study the feasibility of, of opening a law school here in El Paso. And each said that every single session since, there's been a bill uh, filed to create a law school. In, in 2017, the bill was not heard in committee, uh, either in the House or in the Senate. Last session, the bill was heard and voted out unanimously from the uh, House Committee on Higher Education. However, it was left uh, in, in the Calendars Committee, and it didn't make it to the House floor. In this session, uh, I filed uh, Senate Bill 603 to create a law school in El Paso, and uh, House Bill 199, uh, filed by Representative Ortega, is the House companion to my bill, uh, was heard and approved in the House Committee on Higher Education, and, and it passed the House last week by a, by a vote of 86 to 58. Uh, and now it starts the process in the Senate. And uh, the House bill uh, does have a fiscal note, uh, meaning there's a cost to the state. And it didn't have any funding tied to it uh, in the House budget. Uh, so that's something that, that we're going to have to fight for uh, in, a, in a tough budget year, quite frankly. Uh, as of today, the bill hasn't been referred to the Senate uh, uh, committee yet. But once it's referred, I'm going to be requesting and, and hearing uh, a hearing on it and uh, really work hard to push the, the bill all the way to the governor's desk. Ms. Monteros, you've been taking a great deal of interest and you've been doing a lot of work. You're with, again, you are the president of the El Paso Bar Association. Can you tell me about the behind the scenes work that took place to even get us to this point? Oh, goodness gracious. Uh, there are so many people that have carried the water on this. Um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Sines, uh, including Ray Monsetta, who chairs the Law School Initiative Committee. And he really uh, did a great deal of, of uh, work to get it kickstarted uh, recently, along with uh, one of our attorneys, Danny Anchondo, as well as Albert Armandades Jr. And I mean, there are so many people involved and so many people that have carried the water on this. It's kind of like we're running a relay race and everyone passes a torch to someone else in front of them uh, when they get tired. Because of course, you know, there are other things that are going on with people's individual uh, profess professional lives. But uh, we've uh, found that there's a great deal of community support for this. We've received uh, uh, many uh, letters of, of support. We've got the uh, county commissioner's support on this. In fact, uh, Commissioner Stout uh, testified on behalf of the bill re uh, this recent uh, uh, before the Higher Education Committee at the House. And also, uh, we've got, uh, you know, there's just a lot of support in, and the city, of course, supports it as well. And we've got, uh, I mean, there's so many people. It's like a choir of people are out there saying we do need a, a law school here. And not only that, but perhaps one of the most innovative law schools in recent history nationally, because we're so close to the border. We're on the border. Right. So, and ironically, Juarez has a law school, but we do not. That's correct. And you can just, your wheels can start turning in terms of all the possibilities there in terms of the type of law school this will be. We are one of the largest import export uh, places in the world. 
Uh, and uh, so there's a lot of transactional uh, work going on that is being, uh, you know, it, it, it goes out to other firms outside of El Paso yeah. and outside of Juarez. Outsourcing, fact, yeah. Yeah. In fact, uh, but I will say one of the largest loss, uh, uh, law firms is located in Juarez. Wow. Um, globally. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, it's it's just amazing. So right. a lot of people see the vision. Right. But it's it's a it's a challenge in getting that vision to fruition, and that's where we're so we're so uh, uh, excited about Senator Cesar Blanco's efforts, and of course Lina Ortega's efforts, and right. everyone else who you know uh, has has uh, tried. Right, if I may, Senator Blanco, um, right now, where are students based on on the on the research that your that your office has been doing? Where are potential law students going to school now to study law, obviously, if not here in El Paso? Well, um, I, first of all, I, I, I want to echo uh, what Ms. Montero had said. A lot of people have come to support this. Uh, Ray Mancera, members of LULAC, a variety of folks in the community. So this is truly a community effort. Uh, but to your question, uh, University of New Mexico School of Law in Albuquerque is the closest law school to El Paso. Um, in Texas, the closest Texas law school to El Paso is, is Texas Tech University in Lubbock. Um, and, and Tech is, is one of 10 law schools in Texas. So if people want to stay in Texas for law school, it means that they're going to have to go to Tech or they're going to have to go to uh, UT. Uh, they have to move to Dallas, San Antonio, uh, or the Houston areas, or they have to go out of state. In right. fact, 32% of lawyers in El Paso are from out of, out of state law schools and 22% wow. of them are from UT law. And then about 17% are from Texas Tech Law School. So we need to give El Pasoans an option to, to go to law school here at home. Yeah, talk about a brain drain. All right, we're gonna go ahead and take a really quick break. This is ABC7 Extra Sunday edition. When we come back, I'll ask my guest what sort of, uh, what sort of students who would prefer studying law here rather than the next closest law school which is in Lubbock and of course Albuquerque. Uh, is anyone taking a look at this? Of course I'll ask my guest. You're watching ABC7 Extra where news comes first. Look at that. Five glorious inches of Whataburger. Fresh 100% beef stacked high with melted cheese and fresh cut veggies. But what if it's too much fresh beef? Stacked too high with too much melted cheese and too many fresh cut veggies. Well, we have a four inch burger like a lot of other places. We just call it a junior. Good thing there's a burger made just for you. Good thing there's Whataburger. It's a big honor and even bigger obligation to be the guardian of ABC7's legacy. When I first walked in the door here 19 years ago, I immediately sensed how dedicated our newsroom is. It goes way beyond the people you see on the air. So many of our skilled journalists behind the scenes have been giving you their best for decades. I feel that experience and that commitment to this community every time we're on the air. So thank you for your trust. We're working hard to keep it every single day. ABC7, where news comes first. An awful lot can change overnight. Breaking news from the ABC7 Alert Center following two separate shootings this morning. ABC7's Good Morning El Paso knows you need to get up to speed fast. We do know that one of those victims is suffering serious injuries. The ABC7 Alert Center is Good Morning El Paso's tool for the latest updates to keep your family safe. This is a developing story. Once we learn more information, we'll be sure to let you know on air and online at kvi8.com. Only on ABC7's Good Morning El Paso. When you need the latest news, turn to the ABC7 Alert Center. From the ABC7 Alert Center, the outrage over the shooting of a young black man in Minnesota continues tonight. With Daniel new details breaking minute by minute. From our ABC7 Alert Center, the U.S. is now recommending a pause in distribution of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. The ABC7 Alert Center has real-time updates to keep you informed and your family safe. Only on ABC7, where news comes first. Welcome back to ABC 7 Extra Sunday Edition. I also want to welcome back State Senator Cesar Blanco. Senator Blanco sits on the Higher Education Committee. Also joining us is Janet Monteros. Ms. Monteros is the president of the El Paso Bar Association. I want to start with you this time, Ms. Monteros. Have, has there, have there been any studies yet to determine exactly just how many uh, folks, how many graduates, undergraduates, express a desire to study law closer to home right here in El Paso? 
Oh, goodness gracious. Uh, the UTEP has been operating something called the LPSI program for quite a few years. And uh, these are people, and it's a very selective program. Um, and uh, there are a lot more people who apply than are accepted into it. So we know that there's a robust population out there that really want to go to school, to law school. And uh, with our LPSI students, they're so they're so wonderful and brilliant that a lot of the Ivy League schools come here to poach our students, essentially from out of <laughs> uh, and to out of state schools. So um, you know there there is a robust capacity here, and especially too not only with the UTEP and Texas Tech being here, but with also Fort Bliss. We have quite a few veterans who who uh, have expressed interest in going to law school or family members going to law school while they're here. So there, there certainly is that, that, uh, that uh, uh, type of, uh, of uh, supply out there. And um, although I don't believe there has been, uh, that's part of what we would look at in terms of the feasibility, the market study would look at that, you know, how right. many, you know, how many students would you enroll, blah, blah, blah. Right. Yeah. Senator Blanco, uh, what education entity, university or otherwise, college, what have you, has expressed interest in uh, being a part of a, a law school here in El Paso? Has there been any? Well, there has been, and, and it, it, that, that's part of what, what's required is for a system to express an interest. Uh, once, once one of our bills become law, the university system has to express that interest in opening a law school in El Paso. Uh, the University of Texas system it has already expressed that it's ready to begin this process through UTEP. Uh, you know, but also the Higher Education Coordinating Board would have to then do a feasibility study of opening a law school here in our region. But there is interest, and uh, so that, that, that's really good news. Now, uh, the El Paso Inc., our news partners at El Paso Inc., have been reporting that UTEP President Heather Wilson wants the law school on, on their campus. Is that set in stone, or could it be located elsewhere, say maybe downtown at one of the uh, courthouses that aren't being used? Well, uh, it, it all depends on, on the resources available to, to uh, the institution. It also um, uh, requires legislation from, or uh, funding from the legislature, rather. So uh, that's something that we've got to look at uh, currently. Uh, the budget, both in the House and the Senate, don't have money for a law school. Um, however, we're really the only one uh, entity that's that's pushing for that, other than the Rio Grande Valley. Uh, the, the representatives in the Rio Grande Valley have been pushing for a law school in, in that region as well. Uh, so we're really, the border region is really the only area that uh, is expressing a major interest in pushing legislation to, to, to create a new law school at this moment. Yeah, Ms. Monteros, I'll, I'll ask you. Um, I, I understand that you did testify. I know that a group from El Paso has been going down to Austin testifying. What has been your best pitch to try to convince lawmakers to give us a law school? Well, uh, I'll add first that the long drive down there, because <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, we've, we've, during COVID, of course, um, the pitch is actually uh, not only just, of course, all the uh, support that's engendered by people, but also fiscally, financially, it would be of a bit great benefit to the state of Texas, because it would be income producing for the state of Texas. And not only that, it would, it would keep our talent here in the state of Texas where we need it, especially in El Paso. So, and um, also uh, I will add that in terms of unemployed lawyers here, because you often hear, oh, there are too many lawyers, less than 1% of the attorneys in El Paso are unemployed. We just have 1,000, basically 1,300 attorneys here, which is one attorney for every 657 people, as opposed to, let's say the Round Rock Austin area, which has an attorney, let's see, one for every, um, oh, what is it? Uh, one for every 170 people. Wow. So there is a quite a market demand. 
And there's so many mom and pops here, you know that as well as, as we all do, that there's so many small businesses that need the help of an attorney. And instead of, because a lot of them are, are uh, looking for how to set up their businesses and, and what have you, we know that there's pent up demand here. Yeah. Senator Blanco, of course, once bills pass and, the, and it becomes law, and as, as, as the El Paso Inc. reported, you vowed to, to try to get something to the, to the governor's desk for signature. Where will the funding come from? So the, the funding would come from, from the state budget. Uh, it would be allocated to the university system and then allocated to the, the university uh, law school itself. Um, but the first step would be having it heard in, to, in a committee. From there, the committee and the Senate would have to pass the bill. Uh, then the governor uh, would have to sign the bill. Once that becomes law, the university system has expressed that interest in opening the law school in El Paso. Uh, and then you t the, the system would be ready to begin that process for UTEP to begin that law school. Um, so it, there, there are several steps uh, ahead of us. Um, so we're working at it. Uh, we're getting closer every single session. And uh, hopefully at some point we'll have a law school here in El Paso. Is this the closest we've ever been? This is the closest we've ever been, yeah. Exciting? It is exciting. <laughs> it's exciting just like our medical school, uh, our dental school here in El Paso, the, the ability to send our own to a, a, uh, a school like that so they can practice here at home, uh, it's a dream for them and it's a dream for our community. We want to grow our own uh, professionals in our community, and that's the idea. All right. We're going to take another quick break. You're watching ABC7 Extra. Still ahead, why did it take so long for El Pasos to try to bring a law school to the borderland? I'll ask my, best, my guests when we come back. With Root Insurance... You have the power to control your own rates, and that could save you a lot of money. Root is a new type of car insurance that looks deeper than other insurers by using the sensors in your smartphone to understand important details about how you actually drive. That's how Root is able to give better drivers a better price. Here's how it works. Download our app, get on the road, and then get a quote. Learn how you can take control of your car insurance at joinroot.com. Looking to go RVing this summer? Camping World and Gander have an RV for you with over 80,000 factory fresh RVs to choose from and the largest selection of outdoor gear. We are ready for this camping season right now. Get a brand new RV for only $98 a month. Plus, put $0 down and make no payments for 90 days. As the nation's largest RV dealer network, every mile you travel brings you closer to a Camping World or Gander RV and Outdoors. Click, call, or visit us today. Looking to shift into an electric vehicle? El Paso Electric can help. We're your resource to learn about electric vehicles, special charging rates, and potential incentives. Because driving green can actually save you some green with our Go EV Savings Program. It's your connection to learn about great discounts on electric vehicles available at local dealerships. So if you're ready to buy electric, visit epelectric.com slash EV and get started today. Welcome back to ABC 7 Extra Sunday edition with us, State Senator Cesar Blanco. Senator Blanco sits on the Higher Education Committee. Also joining us is Janet Monteros. Ms. Monteros is the president of the El Paso Bar Association. And I'll start with you, uh, Senator Blanco. Why has it taken so long for us to get this far to try to get a law school in El Paso? Well, these things take quite some time, as you can tell from the dental school and the medical school here, as well as the pharmacy school at UTEP. Uh, both El Paso and the Rio Grande Valley have, have been working for years uh, to get a law school in, in our areas, uh, but we've made progress in every single session since 2017. Um, sometimes ideas are slow moving in the legislature, and we also have a very condensed amount of time. Sometimes it's uh, funding related. Uh, so, you know, you've got to get the funding, uh, not only the law passed, but the funding in place as well at the same time. Um, currently, we've got about a month left. 
Uh, we're going to keep working hard to get this bill passed and, and bring a law school here to El Paso. We also have to get the funding for it. So it's a work in progress, and these things take some time, uh, but we're working and we're making progress. Then I'll ask you, as, as an expert there in Austin, because previously you were a representative, uh, how long do you think that this will happen in, a, in this month that we will be able to get it to the governor's desk in that one month that we have left? Well, uh, as, as you know, when the when, when we get closer to sine die, it's always harder. Um, but look, uh, there's been progress in the House. It's passed. Uh, it's come over to the Senate. It hasn't been set for a hearing yet, but uh, I've been working that to, to get it set, uh, as well as my bill uh, to get set on higher ed. Uh, they would come through the committee that I serve on on higher ed, so we're working hard to get those placed. Ms. Monteros, are you, as you mentioned earlier during the show, you said that it's been a lot of people have been picking up the torch and running with it. Why has it taken so long to at least get us to this point, or at least there's a ray of hope that we that El Paso might get its first law school? Gee, uh, uh, Mr. Steins, a lot of factors enter into that. Um, it's not because of a lack of wanting uh, by, by many people here. It's just the pragmatics, the politics involved. And um, as you know, as, as everyone knows, uh, El Paso is, uh, in terms of market strategy, it's developing very quickly. And uh, so uh, maybe, uh, I, I don't know, I can't really speculate as to why, how long it's taken, uh, but there have been a lot of people that have continually supported the idea, the concept. Um, and a lot of questions, a lot of people have asked, why doesn't El Paso have a law school? Yeah. And it just takes uh, putting, you know, pen to paper and shoulder to the, the wheel to yeah. get it going. Uh, we talked, you know, yeah. We talked about the irony uh, that of uh, the fact that Juarez has a law school, yet we don't. Has a law school in Juarez taken some interest in trying to help us to bring a law school to our area? Absolutely. Uh, Ray Monsetta, as I said, who's the chair of the uh, law school initiative committee, has met with the uh, the uh, 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 Juarez uh, School of Law and actually talked to them about the idea and pitched it to them and they're very supportive. All the abogados in, in Juarez are very supportive of of the law school. Yeah. Um, can you imagine the continuing legal educational opportunities for them? Uh, it's just amazing uh, yeah. the interaction that we will have once the law school is here. Um, there's there's quite a bit of support and we've had when we've had the initiative meetings we've had professors from what is come from what is yeah. uh, to uh, partake uh -huh. in the discussions as well as uh, council members from what is yeah. what does not be a fabulous opportunity for uh, international law yes absolutely absolutely uh, okay. Senator Blanco yeah. let's say hypothetically uh, hypothetically, the, you're able to, to achieve uh, your goal and get the bill to, uh, to the governor's desk. What happens next? Well, um, after that, uh, then, then we, we got to identify the funding for it. Um, if it's not funded this go around, we'll have to identify the funding for it uh, next legislative session. Um, but again, look, El Paso is the only city out of the 50 largest metropolitan areas in the United States without a law school. Uh, I think it's something that's going to contribute to El Paso's well-being. We're, uh, we're underserved, as, as Ms. Monteros admit, indicated, by the legal profession. And uh, uh, we want to get our folks uh, educated in, in the law. So uh, it'd be important for us. First step is pass the law. Second step is get it funded. I'm sorry, the second step was what? To get it funded. Yeah, yeah. And as you said, it would be it would be state funded. Uh, Ms. Monteros, is there any sort of, for lack of another term, some sort of booster club that would also uh, try to maybe incorporate the uh, the private uh, the private sector to help us bring a law school here? Oh, there there are uh, discussions going on, which you know, um, you know, there there are different people that are involved in the concept. So, and I can't, you know, obviously I I, I can't. Uh, go into very uh, great depth on that, but that is being discussed among among certain sectors in the community, um, and uh, the support is there. Yeah, the support is there uh, to to uh, get the the private sector involved. Is that is that what you're referring oh, to? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. 
All right, well, uh, Ms. Monteros, Senator Blanco, I want to thank you so much for taking time to talk to us. This is a very important subject, and of course, I'm giving you an open invitation once that bill passes and the governor signs it to go come back on ABC7 Extra Sunday Edition to talk about the reality of the possibility of having an, uh, a law school here in El Paso. Again, I want to thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. And I want to thank you, El Pasoans, for joining us. I'm Saul Sainz, and this has been ABC7 Extra Sunday Edition. Good night y buenas noches.